My name is Mike Suters, and I'm an application engineer at Trimec. Today, I'd like to show you the process for going through and modifying your camera paths within SolidWorks Composer. This can be a bit of a daunting process, so in today's tech tip, I hope to show you how to make this process a little bit easier. What we'd like to create here is basically an animation that spins around our swing set, goes up the stairs behind the slide, goes through the tunnel that you see at the top of the swing set, and then down the other slide, and finally takes a look back at the entire swing set. It's a pretty complex animation, and we're going to use a few of the tools within Composer to help us along the way. First thing that we'd like to have here are a couple grids. These grids are going to help us not only place our camera, but also align the direction or the point of focus where that camera is actually looking. So let's go ahead and create those. The way we can do that is just go to our Author tab and choose to create a grid. There's two different ways we can create grids here. We can either create a grid just from standard points that we've selected uh, within the, the assembly, um, or we can go through and choose to create a grid on geometry. That's going to be a better option for me in this case, since I'd like to have the camera go right through the middle of the, the tube at the top and then down the middle of the slide. So let's go through and create two grids to kind of help us out here. First one I'll do is just click right here on the tube, and you can see there conveniently Composer has placed the two axes right at the center of that tube. And that's really going to help us out later on once we're actually placing those, those camera keys. We'll go ahead and place that there, um, but you can see right now the grid is aligned um, kind of perpendicular to the tube, and we'd really rather have it um, have the x-axis go right through the center of that tube. The way we can accomplish that is by coming over here to our properties for that particular grid and choosing to rotate around that y-axis 90 degrees in this case. Great. We're looking good there. Let's go ahead and add our next grid. Like I said, this other one is going to help us uh, align this right on the slide. Um, so again, let's go ahead and click on that slide geometry. Again, you can see it focuses it right at the, the center of the slide, but again, our rotation is slightly off about the y-axis. So let's go ahead and rotate that once more. Awesome. That gives us two grids to work with. Um, and we can see right now those two grids have been added over here within our coordinate systems. Uh, we don't need this, this third grid for the slide just yet, so let's go ahead and turn that one off. Perfect. So here we are, we're looking right at the swing set. This would be a perfect starting position for our walkthrough animation. So the way we want to mark this is by creating a camera key. Right down here on your timeline, we have an option to set the camera keys. Uh, so let's go ahead and create one right here at zero seconds. Next, we'll move to two seconds, and we'd like to have this swing set animation kind of rotate about the side here so that we're looking kind of dead on to the side of the swing set. Right about there looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and add another camera key. We'll move to four seconds, and we'll spin around to the back of this swing set, but in this case, we probably want to start to focus more on the steps, um, so we'll kind of zoom in here to the steps, and maybe even look directly at the steps, uh, since that's how we want to uh, kind of travel up this swing set. We'll get our view in a position in which we're happy, and then we can just go ahead and create another, another camera key. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move to six seconds, and this is where we want to start uh, concerning ourselves with traveling right through the center of the tube on this swing set. Now, I could go through and try to align my view, um, but that makes it a little bit tricky. I'm never going to get that perfectly correct through the center of that swing set. Um, so what's a better way that I can go through and add a camera key that's going to be placed exactly where I want the camera to be located and have the focus looking exactly where I intend? Well, the way we can do that is by going to our Animate toolbar and choosing to create a camera key. This is going to give us a little bit finer control and allow us to actually go through and place this camera key. Um, so I'll go here, right about the center of the, um, the stairs, and we'll align that camera key with the x-axis. Um, so we can see there our y value is, is set to zero. We're right on that x-axis right there, um, and that's going to let us go through and place the position of this camera. So we'll go ahead right there and place the position, and the next thing that we need to do is change the orientation of that camera. Where do we want that camera to actually focus? Um, and I'd like, to, I'd like it to go straight through the center of the slide. So again, we'll choose a point um, somewhere over here within the other um, tower of the swing set. Again, focusing on the, uh, the x-axis there to make sure that our y value is set to zero. So we're looking dead through the center of that tunnel. So right there, that looks like a great position. And let's go ahead and move this to about eight seconds. We probably want to have about um, a two second travel time through the, the tunnel here. So we'll move it to eight seconds. 
and we want to go through and again place that camera um, exactly where we want it to finish at that eight second mark. So again, probably right over here about the center of the tower. And we want this to continue to be looking uh, in this direction for this camera key. So we'll place that right there as well. Awesome. So that gives us a great camera key and a great um, animation up to that eight second mark. Um, but at this point, we'd like to kind of take our focus off of the tunnel and start moving our focus to the, the actual slide. Um, so let's move to about 10 seconds. You can see that's going to uh, move our camera back to um, the position that we, we were looking at after we traveled through the tunnel. Um, if you ever find that those those um, camera positions, if, if, if that is sort of confusing you as you're going through and creating these animations, you can always turn off camera play mode and it will stop reorienting your view uh, to the actual camera. Uh, but in this case, I kind of want to have it there just to see a preview of, of what my, uh, my views are actually going to do. Um, so let's go ahead and turn off this particular grid and we want to turn on that third grid that we had uh, for the actual slide. Okay, and now at this point, I can go and place my camera, maybe align it somewhat with the center of the tube here. Um, but in this case, we want to align it there and then look somewhat down the slide at this 10 second mark. So maybe right about there, almost parallel to the slide. And then finally, we can move our timeline to about the 12 second mark. There we can see that view that we just created looking directly down that slide. Uh, but now we want to have one um, kind of at the finishing mark of this slide. So maybe a little bit down here. Um, and what I can do is actually even point it straight out, which will cause my camera to sort of rotate um, and look up as it travels down the slide, which might be beneficial in this case, um, sort of as if we're um, you know, a child sliding down this, this swing set slide. Um, so there we go. We'll go ahead and place that position and the camera orientation at 12 seconds. Again, we can see that, that camera key that it just created. Um, and then finally here at our 14 second mark, uh, let's maybe go ahead and rotate this camera around and finally get a great uh, front view of the swing set. Um, sometimes you might see that as you've been rotating your view here, your orientation might get slightly off. Um, so this is where it's helpful to use some of the align camera tools that we have available to us within SolidWorks Composer. Um, so in this case, maybe I want to get a front and back view, and that will allow me to reposition this and sort of get that better isometric view uh, looking right up at the swing set. Uh, maybe again, rotate it up here slightly, um, kind of get a, a child's perspective of this, this swing set. Um, so right there, that's looking pretty good uh, for my, my final camera key. Um, so let's go ahead and choose to set that as my final camera key here at 14 seconds. Awesome. Okay, so let's go and turn off our grid um, and maybe go back to the start of our animation so we can see exactly what it is that we've just created. Um, I also have my create camera key button still on, so I'll just turn that off so that we can get a nice, uh, a nice clean view here. Uh, so let's go ahead and play this and see what our animation looks like right now. So again, we can see we start there at that asymmetric view, swing around to the back, kind of go up the stairs here, and then up through the middle of that tube, turn around to look at the slide, and then slide right down there. Um, so we can see through that process there um, that things weren't quite as smooth as I might like. Um, you can see that we actually went underneath the slide. Uh, we had a bit of a, a rotation before we went through that tube. Um, so what we can do here now is we can actually analyze our camera path. And the way we're gonna wanna do that again is by turning off the camera play mode. So here, if I go to my camera path, I can turn on my, my linear camera path and see exactly what it is that I've just created. So if I go back to the, the start of my animation here, I can see that camera kind of traveling all throughout this path. Okay, and if I, I zoom out here, I can see the start of our camera is up here. Now on this camera path, it's important to understand the, the distinction that we see here between the blue lines and the yellow lines. So the blue lines are the position of the camera, while the yellow lines are the focus of the camera. Wherever you see a red mark on either of those lines, that's indicating that we have a camera key right there. Um, so you can see here, as I play from one camera key to the next, we're traveling along that blue line, and then as we get to that next camera key, we're at that red dot. Um, and we can also see where the focus is uh, for that particular camera. You can see it's highlighting uh, this, this point of focus right, right here. Um, so again, it's, it's not really exactly what I'm looking for yet. And in fact, this looks a little bit blocky um, if I look at the way that this camera view was created. Um, so what might be beneficial to do in this case is turn on a custom camera path. Um, so what that's gonna do is give me some additional handles here uh, where I can go through and sort of change um, how this camera is actually uh, functioning. 
Um, so here, as we travel uh, from our first camera view to the next, um, we might want to um, maybe make this a little bit smoother. Um, so if we go back to that camera path, uh, as well as show our camera, that will give us the ability to actually grab these handles and sort of tweak these. So here you can see I can maybe make this a little bit of a smoother path by dragging this handle uh, kind of about wherever I'd like it. You can see right there that's giving me more of a, a, a down slope and I kind of want more of an up slope. So let's go ahead and grab that and maybe pull it out here a little bit. And you may have to manipulate your view a few times in order to get this just right. Um, that's a little bit too much of a curve, so let's go ahead and bring that back in a little bit, maybe bring it more out here so that we have a smoother transition from one view to the other. Um, and this is where it might be beneficial to enable multiple viewports. Um, so if you go back to your, um, your window area here, you can go and, through, go and change the layout uh, to multiple view panes to kind of help yourself out. Um, for the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to leave it as, as one viewport right now, um, but we'll go through and sort of tweak some of these, these keys here um, so we can see exactly how we can smooth this out. Okay, and if you remember over here on the slide, we were going a little bit too far uh, deep into the slide. We really just want to adjust the vertical position of that. Um, so let's maybe go through and align our view to the right side here so we can uh, just go through and change the vertical position of these, these keys. So we'll go through and grab that key, maybe drag that up a little bit so that we're a little bit higher up on that slide. Maybe the same thing for this one. Um, and if need be, we can also go through and adjust these key positions as well. So if we ended up a little bit too high there at the end, again, we can pull that up and sort of tweak this. Cool. Okay, again, maybe get a little bit of a better, smoother transition here. By pulling these keys around. Awesome. Okay, um, so let's go back to our views here, or our collaboration tab, and turn off our camera. And let's turn camera play mode back on, go back to the begin beginning of our animation, and let's see our final result here. So now we can see we're getting a little bit of a smoother transition uh, between some of these views. You can see here we're going up to that tube a little bit better now. And then finally out to our slide animation, we're no longer going underneath that slide, and we get a much nicer animation there as we, as we travel down it. Um, so that's the way we can go through and tweak some of the camera path options within SolidWorks Composer. I hope you enjoyed today's tech tip and keep tuning in to the TriMec blog uh, and checking the TriMec tip tips emails uh, for more, more tips and tricks. Thanks again. <laughs>